All right, on today's show, we've got a ton of rookie wide receivers to talk about, and we debate which guys belong in which team and what type of wide receiver would be best on what team. We've all got different lists of the top five. Make sure you tune in, subscribe, enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, April 7th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Very excited to be here. Judge Giamatti Al Borland, the Borgogan, also on hand. A good distance away, so I'm feeling comfortable. You don't want them too close. Yeah, you don't want to catch producer. <laughs> right. I mean, that'd be embarrassing. Catch producer. Is that like a disease? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. look at them. Yeah, unsightly. But still loved. Oh, still worthy love. of love. Just stay back there in the dark. Uh, we've got Mike didn't want to get in on any of that. I was I, like, I have my own thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> we have the rookie wide receiver preview today on the show. Got some NFL news. Just really one big piece of news to talk about. Very excited to, to kind of get into the weeds on a position that we don't think is inferior to other seasons. And the rookie wide receivers this year, pretty deep. Yeah, I mean, I we all we all have different thoughts on the top guys, but the same top five apply independently for all three of us. So there are at least five guys that we both uh, really like, and that is that's enough to make an impact for fantasy. I think there are also. I was telling Mike before the show there are really kind of three categories of rookie wide receiver, in my opinion types of wide receivers and I think that there are certain teams that could use a receiver of a certain type and so where these guys end up is going to again this is still pencil season just because we're sitting here previewing rookie wide receivers doesn't mean that post draft this is the same order it's going to change because you have some high profile quarterback situations looking for wide receivers with Green Bay with Kansas City I've seen mock drafts with uh, Justin Herbert picking up another wideout early in the oh. first round. So oh, there yeah. are there are opportunities, and that's going to dictate really where the confidence is. Yeah, I mean, if if you slide in the draft, you know, I pre-draft Keem Butler was uh, beloved, <laughs> and then the NFL said, no, no, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't agree. And then they look, they're good at their jobs. So they um, were, and they were right. Yeah, yeah. they were a hundred percent right. So we. Uh, the, you're 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 correct to say that these are pre NFL draft rankings, and that is not going to be the same as what we're telling you to draft. Uh, you know, after the NFL does. Now I'm getting word from uh, Al Borland, who's never one to refrain from uh, letting you know if you said something incorrectly. But you apparently said all three of us both really like them. Mm. All Sounds three of us both really like these wide receivers. <laughs> Sounds about me. <laughs> All right. Before we kick things off, uh, we are going to play a game of Who Am I? want to remind you the Ultimate Draft Kit available at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can get your best pre-order price. You can get the Dynasty Pass content with all the rookie breakdowns and uh, team opportunity charts, Mike's trade targets for Dynasty Leagues. Check everything out at ultimatedraftkit.com. I want to play a game. Both of us, all three of us, are going to play a, a little game of Who Am I? So I'm going to give you a clue. Is there no theme? We don't have a, a Who Am I theme? Well, no. like, you want some music? No, 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 no. I, uh, that'd be nice, too. Oh. But no, I meant, like, uh, no hints, like <laughs> a game of who, who Am I in the AFC or NFC? Or? Nah, not this time. I okay. guess the hints just come as the questions or are revealed. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, please, no theme. Whatever we do. <laughs> we learned yesterday <laughs> when recording the Spitballers podcast yes. that uh, Mike 
has two oh, goat, two yeah two, two mouth, instruments two mouth do, instruments which I is can, the trumpet yeah I mean I guess like like I can uh, trumpets the, you know, that's the your number one tone. that's yeah. your number one right? well I could maybe like that's not really a trumpet that's a lower brass <laughs> uh, but, but that then you've and, got and, the wah guitar and wah guitar <laughs> yeah wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh wah, man wah. all right wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Clue number one. Prior to last season, I was no help to fantasy football teams. Okay. So breakout or, or rookie. rookie. Yeah. Mm. So you can play along at home. We'll lock in our guesses when we feel like we would like to make one. Uh, clue number two. In 2021, I played in 15 games and finished the RB13 and half PPR scoring. Ooh. I feel like that should give it away, but uh, I have my guess. Yeah, I in? do too. No, I can't lock it in just yet. I think I'm going to lock. Oh, no. I'm oh, gonna... no. Don't reveal it yet, Andy. No, I won't. Oh, um, crap. He's lock... You're locking it in? Yeah, but I think I might have been deceived because I don't think they would have. <laughs> I don't think that they would have made it this easy on me, so I'm going to okay. be wrong. And I'll be wrong on this guess, I'm sure. Guess number or uh, hint number three. Despite my overall RB13 finish, I only had four weekly finishes as the RB13 or better. Okay, I'm still in the running. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah. Are you gonna lock Mike? Because you can play at home. Play at home. See if you beat us. Mm. No lock, huh? Jay, how are you doing over there, Jay? <laughs> I'm not locking yet. I'm gonna. Wait, I'm gonna really? keep playing with the audience. I'm. I'm locking. Okay, you're locking on guest three. I, yeah. I locked on guest two. Uh, number four. Hint number four, I did not top 1,000 rushing yards mm. in 2021. You feeling good still? I'm just glad I locked because this that clue changed nothing. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. I was in the same boat. So I, I'm still locked. I would get the, okay. the three points. Clue number five, I had a whopping 15 rushing yeah, touchdowns. Yeah, baby. Okay, I feel much better about my guess. I am very wrong on my <laughs> guess. <laughs> Jason, you... <laughs> A whopping 15 rushing touchdowns. Would this be? You you have to write your answer down. Okay, I'm writing it down. I I don't think I'm right. Okay. Here. So how do we? Re what's the rules on revealing, bro? Well, I mean, we're 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 all the way through all the hints. Okay, Andy, you give your give your guess. I was I felt like I was still alive through four hints, but my original guess was Javante Williams. I figured a rookie didn't play RB 13 and half PPR. I wasn't sure if he finished that high. I don't think he did. Javante was RB eighteen. I'm yes. being informed eighteen, but I thought I thought it might have been the right answer. Mike, do, do you want me to reveal, Jay, or do you want to go? Uh, I I went AJ Dillon, but he didn't have fifteen no, rushing no. touchdowns. I'm, I went with Damian Harris. The, Correct. The, oh. Boom, boom, shakalaka. So patience paid off. Yeah. Although those hints That's, did that, that was, really. That was my guess after number two. So yeah, I was going to say, did you really have any? extra help on those other guesses no the, only, I, the, the 15 rushing touchdowns you were just not you didn't you weren't brave enough correct <laughs> correct <laughs> that, that is correct but i mean he I, he had at least two weeks am i remembering this two weeks where With he had three touchdowns he had yeah. three touchdowns monster game that'll uh boost the old should have had another season. week with three touchdowns except for Ramondre ended up having the last oh, three quarters yeah. and cost me a championship. When we got to the 15, I thought it was going to be James Conner, but then I'm like, he he has helped people for fantasy yeah, before yeah, this year, be and I was going to take take a little umbrage with that. Okay. <laughs> you were going to take some umbrage. <laughs> so, <laughs> instead of working on a new guess, you were building up your argument. That's right. He's building <laughs> on his umbrage. Uh, the, the one piece of news... Ooh. That I want to share before we get into our rookie discussions. Stephon Diggs, four years, $104 million, new extension, $70 million guaranteed, tied to Buffalo for six years. He's 28.4 years old right now. He is coming off of four consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, had fantasy finishes of wide receiver three. This was two years ago, right? Made the headlines, came to, to Buffalo. But last year was the wide receiver seven. And everyone feels like he was disappointing. And what's Because you paid up for him in the draft. Yeah, what's what's crazy is people are upset because they didn't necessarily get the monster, monster games, but he was actually very consistent. You know, he didn't for a wide receiver, 
he was good the vast majority of his weeks, far more so than than the average good wide receiver. Yeah, but when you draft, I think his ADP was like what wide receiver three or so. Yeah, second round draft pick. I mean, when you're spending that draft capital on a wide receiver, you want spike weeks you want, you want them the to boom be, yeah you want them to be consistent but they also need spike weeks that that win the the week because they go out and like uh against the jets he went out and put eight receptions 162 yards and a touchdown like like that's what i'm looking for but i need that to happen like four or more times and that that was really his one big juicy game he was the wide receiver three drafted last year and that's why people are disappointed but the wide receiver four was DeAndre Hopkins, who was worse than Diggs, Metcalf, Ridley, AJ Brown, Keenan Allen. Like, you got to return. Yeah, you. Sure. I mean, Diggs. Diggs had a great season. It's nice to see him get financially rewarded. If you are, are a dynasty manager of Diggs, do a little dance, uh, make a little love, <laughs> get down tonight. Now, comparing him to those other wide receivers, trust me, the people that drafted those players also disappointed. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Every, so everyone was just disappointed <laughs> with their early wide receivers. This is exciting to me, uh, just from a – like a lot of wide receivers this offseason, obviously big trades, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill. Diggs was also rumored with the – he was just set up to where he could go out and he could make a stink and he could force his way out or he could do whatever he wanted to get money. But this was all behind the scenes, and it just happened and got taken care of, and now he's going to be tied to one of the best quarterbacks in football. So if you're a dynasty player, this is huge news for you with Stephon Diggs. Now, I'm going to ask you some names real quick who you'd rather have over Diggs and Dynasty. Jamar Chase? Yes. Yeah. Justin Jefferson? Yep. Yes. A.J. Brown? Yep. Yes. D.K. Metcalf? Yes. <laughs> it's tough because right now. I think I think you still go with Metcalf because he's so young. Like Tyreek? I'll take Diggs. That feels like a, like saying yeah, that, something new out loud. Yeah, that has swapped with the with him going to Tua. And either being linked to Tua or unknown, and and they're about the same age, right? You think he'll have fewer touchdowns? <sighs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, Mike! I thought I was gonna get more trash. <sighs> oh, you, you gotta stop hitting me with the fire dad jokes. It's knocking me well, off these my are game. So thick, and you liking them? <laughs> this is gonna be a real problem for the but, show. But Tyreek and Diggs, they're both, uh, you know, both getting older. So give me the one I know for sure is linked with the quarterback. What about Devontae? Ooh, that one, that's, that's really, a tough call. That's really tough. You've got the better quarterback with Josh Allen. They're both a little bit older. Diggs is younger than Devontae. By, by, well, a, by year. a year? Yeah, it's, it's not much. I think I lean, I lean Adams. Adams. I lean Adams. Yeah. I would actually take Diggs there. Hmm. That's about where the line is, though. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, you take Diggs over him? Correct. Yes. Godwin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. DJ Moore. <sighs> yep. DJ Moore is tough because, well, like with DK Metcalf, he's so young that his, the future fair. could bring a much better quarterback. Okay. It's interesting. I, I like to see it. I think there are going to be some other big types of extensions coming to these wideouts very soon. You know, you hear about, like, Terry McLaurin. You're going to have to figure him out. Yeah, you should trade him. Oh, I know. <laughs> to the Chiefs? <laughs> There's, the Packers. Lot, there's honestly a lot of places he could be traded to, and I would be super happy for him. Who scores more fantasy? For him. Yes. <laughs> Who scores more fantasy points? Ready? <laughs> Game number two. Terry McLaurin and DK Metcalf both are coming up on extensions. If you trade Terry McLaurin and DK Metcalf or DK Metcalf to the Packers, who scores more fantasy points? Mm, DK Metcalf? Yeah, I, I guess I would say DK. Yeah. Same with the Chiefs. I mean, I DK know. is the better player. I definitely. Think I would so. go. I'll go Terry. Wow. Okay. I mean, it, like it, just thinking about the the way that Aaron Rodgers works. Like Devontae Adams was great because not just because he was a like a good athlete. He's an elite route runner, and for for as great as DK is, I I think Terry is a more refined wide receiver. It's and, the touchdowns. And though, DK could end that, that DK would, with Aaron yeah. Rodgers could end up with sixteen plus touchdowns. Yeah. But I would I would bet on Terry. Okay. All right. Giving Terry some love here in the last few moments, maybe. You know, the commander's rumored to be looking at a rookie 
wide receiver. Oh, they because they need someone else besides Terry. So if you get oh, a, how dare you? Curtis Samuel is going to be healthy this year. <laughs> I, I forgot he was on I the know, team. I <laughs> know. I don't blame you. <laughs> Uh, the way you said that, did, oh. I did not forget how much you had invested in him. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, ah, so, close. so close. Let's talk uh, more rookies. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right. We are talking about rookie wide receivers. This is, uh, if, if you didn't listen, Tuesday we did the running backs, did the quarterbacks. We're trying to bring forth our favorite guys at each of these positions. Get your head around the different names that are relevant that should have high enough draft capital, which means how high they're being drafted, in what round. And, you know, if you're drafted in the first few rounds of the NFL, you're going to have a better opportunity to make a difference and make an impact for redraft leagues in year one and especially for dynasty leagues long term. So... Let's begin here. Uh, if you do have the Dynasty Pass, you have looked at the team opportunity charts. There are a lot of teams in need. You know, the Lions are a team rumored to be looking at a rookie wide receiver. Texans, Cardinals, Jets, Falcons, Packers, Chiefs, Bears. It's a deep class, but there's a lot of need at this position. I mean, every, every team always needs a wide receiver. Honestly, if you can, like... The Cincinnati Bengals, as insane as that sounds, with Jamar Chase, Higgins, and Tyler Boyd, they could, they could use another wide receiver. This, the, in the NFL, you can't have too many. I agree with you, but there are some situations that feel more, des more, dire, more yeah, desperate and agreed. dire. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talk in the, the Cardinals. Desperate. They, they, they lost Christian Kirk. They have, uh, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and Rondale Moore and – you know, I guess they did bring back Antoine Wesley, but they need one, right? They didn't bring back A.J. Green yet, thank the Lord. <laughs> they might still do that. <laughs> but, um, man, if you want a case of numbers not matching eyeballs, just look at A.J. Green's numbers, and you're like, all right, he had a nice year. He's one of the better free agent pickups. Yeah, there's, yep. there's empty production. Then you watch him, and you, well, I'm not going to get into it. Yes. All right, so... Let's begin with Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State. Six foot one eighty three, ran a four three eight. He is very much secure on the at number one on my board. Very secure okay. at number one on my board. Now I know, Mike, you also have him there. I I do currently have him there. Uh like factoring into that though is the uh the is Traylon Burks coming down a little bit where he's kind of lost some of his steam because of the combine, which could completely be a smoke screen. Uh, but that's the news that we have to go off of. And it looks like he will be, you know, at the back of the first or the top of the second. So, and Garrett Wilson is just, Wilson is, is fast. He's shifty. He, like you were saying at the beginning, Andy, we have essentially three archetypes of wide receiver here. And so he's a bit of the smaller, uh, 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 on the smaller side, you know, six foot, which is okay, but only 183 pounds compared to, you know, Burks, who is up at 220, and you have uh, Drake London, who's 210 or so. So y you wish he was a, a bit larger, but he just – he c he is the type of wide receiver that can succeed on any NFL team uh, because of his shiftiness and his ability to get open. Yeah, he's, he's got 438 he's got speed. And he is the Vegas odds on favorite tied with oh, Drake. Is he now? Drake okay. London and um and him have the same odds to be the first wide receiver selected in the NFL draft. So when you combine, you know, the the <clears throat> expectation of an investment from an NFL franchise, his speed, his production in college, he's an early declared. There are a kajillion things here to like with Garrett Wilson. I uh, he's number four on my board, and that's not because I dislike him. It really is just a matter of the type of player you're drafting in fantasy because we're coming at this from fantasy football, not mm -hmm. just from who's a good – he's a great wide receiver. He's going to be great, but is he going to turn out to be a Christian Kirk, a Sterling Shepard, a really good wide receiver who helps for fantasy, or will he dominate and be a fantasy superstar? And I, So I was, I was just – I was genuinely curious because we talk a lot about weight in the draft season – 
So as the show was starting, I wrote down just the, you know, fantasy top rankings of wide receivers this year. As far as my board went, Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Diggs, Debo, A.J. Brown, Lamb, Hill, Evans, Hopkins, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, D.K. Metcalf. Every single person is over 200 pounds, all of them except for Hill, who's a outlier. Yeah, outlier. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb, who hasn't actually done it yet and maybe never becomes a superstar, and then the aforementioned Diggs. Um, so most guys who are actually – playing the role of 150-plus targets, a lot of work on the NFL field, touchdown opportunities, those guys aren't this archetype. But I do love Garrett Wilson. I love that he can win in all three areas of the field. Uh, he's good everywhere. He's talented. Um, and he'll probably be the first NFL draft Yeah, I mean, he, he screams Atlanta to me. I mean, I think Atlanta going there, and yes, he's a little bit undersized in comparison to a Justin Jefferson, but Jefferson is the is the performance comp to me. It's that type of player on the field. Instant acceleration. Great hands. Great hands. Uh, leaper. Um, big play guy. Uh, that's what, when I watched him play, that is the type of player that jumped off the page for me. You know, he. I think it was combine weight was 183. Um, he, he had been listed at 190 plus in different places. He needs to put on some weight, but that's something he can do. Yeah, college, like being on camera, it seems to add like five to ten pounds and then two inches yeah <laughs> you're just like well no that's not actually what you weigh but uh, he's he's 21.7 years old so that weight like he may have the ability to play a little bit heavier as he you know uh matures into his full-grown man body it's called ice cream <laughs> but go on i was gonna say like it's called the weight room but but Ice cream will also. There are different ways to put on weight. In the Do you know how much proteins in ice cream, Mike? <laughs> Come on, I'm I'm kind of a what pro at the, bulking uh, up. Uh, so was the Halo Top? The yes, that that is the the, uh, the low cal high protein. Yeah, just eat tons and tons of it. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what I hear. So all right, so Garrett Wilson, uh, that's the breakdown. The other most popular spot, and Kyle, you can weigh in on these from the draft odds standpoint. But you mentioned the Jets, also one of the higher odds locations at number yeah. ten. So you have Atlanta at eight. You have the Jets at 10. Uh, Both of those feel terrible. Did you see, I have a perfect Jets wide receiver that I think needs to go there. Okay. But we're nice not, not, we're not okay. talking about him the, yet. The interesting thing about this particular draft, if if guys are actually taken, though, like the Atlanta at 8 and whatever, the guys who go at the back of the first might be the better fantasy pick where – you know, it's it's pretty hard. Once the NFL draft comes out, it can be difficult to fight up against that of, well, this person was the first wide receiver taken in the NFL draft. He's going to be the best. And you're like, it's oh, not well, the case here. No, you're like, no. well, that was actually, that was Henry Ruggs. And then a couple picks later, it was uh, Jefferson. And, the and, and, and CeeDee Lamb was available as well. So, and Jerry Judy was in that class as well. So it, while... While while those players are selected early, just make sure you're you know taking all of the information and in, not just they were the first wide receiver taken. That is especially true this year, due to some of the injuries that players um, experienced that knocked them down the list as well. Sure. So not only might they be drafted later to a better team, but they might actually be a better wide receiver. But there's a lack of confidence in. Recovery, you know, Jamison Williams being one of them in the national title game, tearing his ACL. Mm. All right, let's take a very quick break before we bring up our number two prospect. All right, let's talk about Traylon Burks. Yes. This is a player that uh, is, I mean, he's massive. He's, he's a, huge. He's a tank. And uh, when you watch him play on the field, there's a been, been a lot of combine criticism, the speed, the four five five, uh, the concerns about that. Mike, I know you are uh, a huge fan of Traylon yes, Burks. Yes. So talk about why <laughs> he just he reminds me so much of AJ Brown, uh, who it would size and speed freaks, and I. I don't buy the the four five five. I looked into Burks talking about it a little bit, and the combine was essentially like 
his not that he didn't train for it, of course, but his first real experience sprinting doing that type of well, just like you know hitting the time and and so I think it was more of he wasn't fully trained for that run, and I don't really I don't hold it against him of. Uh, I just shared a clip with with the company of uh, a, this huge breakaway touchdown, and he was clocked at hitting 22 miles an hour as his top speed, which is outrageous. And you watch well, tons of film of him pulling away; like, he doesn't get caught once he gets going. And maybe it's a little bit slower to start, but he's six three or he's six two, 224 pounds. Uh, like to me, that's the type of wide re- that's the archetype of wide receiver that I want to have. Uh, as as my foundation on my team, he is a little bigger in the weight category than maybe I would want as my archetype because I am mm. concerned about that. I'm concerned. That's my number one concern with Traylon Burks is making. Is this a player where that playing weight thing slips into Kelvin Benjamin uh, situation? Um, the number one comp that I can think of for Traylon Burks at the NFL level is a player that sizes up identically at 6'2", 221. I think Traylon is 6'2", 224. It's Dwayne Bow. If you remember him mm-hmm. from the Kansas sure. City Chiefs, that's who I see when I see Traylon Burks play football. He can be overpowering. He's great after the catch. We joked uh, he's the Derrick Henry of the wide receiver position in that when he's running fast, he looks like he's running slow because of his frame. But I am concerned a little bit about the ceiling. It's not that he'll be a – I think he will be a very valuable contributing professional wide receiver. But I do worry about whether you can get what you get out of a Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, if the ceiling can ever be that high, or if you have a player that's going to be a little bit more touchdown reliant in fantasy than maybe some of these other prospects. Jason, what are your thoughts on Traylon Burks? So I really, really like Traylon, Bur- Traylon Burks. I think that he has, I, I, I'm far more on Mike's side, as as I said earlier, like I want a no wide receiver. No, <laughs> no, but I'm saying on size, I want a bigger uh, guy who can be a touchdown machine, who can really manhandle some cornerbacks in the NFL. There are worries, right? Because like when you have those big, big boys like Traylon Burks is, you know, if if he, if his speed doesn't translate, you have some real bust potential here. I mean, you've got the potential to draft a guy who does absolutely nothing to kill Harry um, in the NFL because it, it, it doesn't necessarily translate. But if you've got, um, you know, a Des Bryant type of player, um, when I watched the film, I really liked him. There was a lot of schemed production, though, so there's sure. there's a little bit of worry there, like a lot of manufactured um, touches. But you can also make the argument that that just means the team was like, we got to get him the, the ball. ball in the hands of our superstar. Um, I really like him. I prefer swinging for the fences with wide receiver draft picks. And so I, I think the ceiling is, is pretty high. I think he's a guy who could end up being a double-digit touchdown type of player. And the nice thing is where he's projected to be drafted has more potential to fall to a Green Bay Packers type of guy. Like he is, he's likely to be the fifth wide receiver off the board. Right, which is which is oftentimes great. I mean, A.J. Brown, who is a very good comp here size, uh, you know, weight-wise, uh, he, he was the sec- uh, second-round pick. Now, it's interesting because we're going to talk about Drake London next. And you would think a player of Traylon Burks' size would be better in the contested catching category. That would be the other thing I'll mention for this hope of him being a high touchdown situation. There was no player on film that did more in the contested catch category Mm. than Mike Evans. I'm sorry, Drake London, 6'4", 219. That is the comp I have for Drake London. It's just incredible that literally at least in all of the film work that I did on Drake London, every play he made, when you say he made a play, it was the two-foot leaping, you know, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans leaping grab. I mean, that is what he does, and it's special. And look, a comp to Mike Evans, that would be great if he ended up that way. But he's huge. He's 6'4", he's 220, 
and he's Jason's number one prospect. He is my number one. I I absolutely love the film. I think that you know where he's got a lot of the the jump ball contested catches, kind of in the in the middle of the field, which just shows he's got great hands. The deep routes, he actually, you know, I I I hear I know Mike and I d debated beforehand. Does he get separation? Um, I think he gets plenty of separation deep in the field. And then the nice thing is, like, he has been used in many different ways through his college career and he was good at all of them like uh, early on he was a slot guy because he was playing with Amon Ross St. Brown and other NFL prospects and then this last breakout year he was used mostly on the outside but he had a lot of screens I think he averaged the most screens uh per game of any college wide receiver so another one of those you know manufactured touches because he is good after the catch he had more um, yards after the catch than the Ohio guys, and he didn't play a full season. Yeah, he season. had a devastating injury. Yeah, he had a he had a terrible injury, missed a, a Ankle, big chunk. Right? Yeah, of the of his final year. But when I watch the film, I just love it. He is the size, the projected speed, the uh, projected draft capital. Like I said, he's tied with Garrett Wilson for best odds to be the number one pick. I love Drake London. He's he is uh, he's my favorite wide receiver this year i forgot to mention it but uh trail on burks is uh, recent mocks have in philadelphia green bay you were talking about later in the draft yeah. um where's the most likely destination right now for london is he's fitting into the jets category because probably he yeah. is the player that i said fits the jets perfectly you want to help a young wide receiver you give him a player at six four that literally is going to win every high point every mi every ball that's not quite where Zach Wilson meant to throw it because he threw it without fundamentals on the run from the offensive line, I think he helps Wilson tremendously. Yeah. What do you have there for his most likely destination? It's either the Jets at ten or the Texans at thirteen. Yeah. He's, well, that's a baby. You could have. <laughs> see, this is the problem with being yeah. like it's almost better best, to be yeah. Davis to, Mills. If if they ship Cooks out and you give him Drake London, I'll feel okay. Mike, what are your thoughts on Drake? Uh, I'm kind of a combination of you guys where. I really like him, so but my red flags are like it would Andy's saying, when I see him make a play, it's a contested catch. And I'm not saying he can't get open, but I feel like he was blanketed more it, when when I'm watching him, I felt like a defender was on him more often than not and that can add the, yes, that archetype can work in the NFL. But if you go to a quarterback that doesn't like that, uh, like or is unwilling or to do that, that. That's what I mean. Is yeah. unwilling to throw into the tight window. You don't like you. That's where the Jets could work. <laughs> you weren't blessed with Ryan Fitzpatrick, who yeah. Devonte Parker was a fifty-fifty ball. Guy. Yes, that's a good and point. He went in the first round, and it it looked like he was a complete bust of a prospect. In comes Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's willing to throw into the tight window because he know he trusts the wide receiver to catch the ball. So that's the only. My only red flag, you, you would hope that uh, the general manager and the coaching staff, they know the tendencies of their quarterback, that they won't use that. But just just saying that that's a, re a red flag of you could find a gun-shy quarterback who won't fully utilize his skill set. It's another uh, former USC 6-4-2-20 wide receiver is Michael Pittman. And there have been so many times we've bemoaned knowing the talent and then – not throwing like when Philip Rivers yes. was there, he just got these little crosser routes. Right. Then you get Carson Wentz. You saw you saw a little bit of the downfield prowess. And um, to be clear, though, to bring it back, this is a top tier wide receiver. Yes, this yes, is yes. a player that. Okay, so all he made all these contested catches. That's a plus for him. He makes them consistently. Out jumps everybody. Strong hands. Um, doesn't block like uh, Mike Evans does, but that could be developed with that size as well. So uh, Jason's number one guy, Drake London, could be off the board very, very early in the draft. Let's talk about Chris Olave, another Ohio State wide receiver, ran alongside Garrett Wilson, six foot one eighty seven. The word that I use to describe Chris Olave, one of the reasons why he's kind of my favorite, he's not ranked the highest because of the draft capital. But he's my favorite wide receiver because of how buttery smooth he is. Mm -hmm. He is the best route runner in this draft. He wins all over the place. Um, 
you know, not particularly a game breaker like he's going to beat you down the sideline every single play. He just kind of picks you apart. And that's what I loved about him on film. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with with you. I watching him is a blast. Um Chris Olave was so smooth. His routes are crisp, like compared to Garrett Wilson, who's like flailing around very successfully. Yes. But still <laughs> That was honestly one I look back at one of my notes of Garrett Wilson. I said he has great balance, yet he often seems out of control. Yes, he always <laughs> seems out of control. That Chris Olave looks like he knows exactly where he's going. The only like I if I'm just talking about film, I love everything I see from Chris Olave. The only knocks are he is smaller, 187 pounds, as far as what I'm saying, preferring these 200-pound archetypes. He was the wide receiver three on his own team um, because he's behind Garrett Wilson, um, and there's a guy coming out next year who's going to be talked early in this yeah. episode. And and so how much of his openness on the field was the fact that he was the third wide receiver you're worried about and he did have a later breakout age he's not yeah, he's, early declare yes he's a senior he, he which is not everything you, you know you prefer the earlier declares we just we've seen a history of success from those guys more often than the the, the four-year guys but he does have a really young breakout age so it's not That's that it, it's not like the worst that he's a four-year guy yeah, he, but it's, uh, yeah, but it's, it's not one of his, the things. Yeah, sorry to correct myself. It wasn't his breakout age, but he's a four year yeah. non early declare. Some of the lighter guys you worry about getting off of press coverage at the NFL level as well. How elegant is that going to be? Um, some comps might be a faster Calvin Ridley, a taller Brandon Cooks for Chris Olave. He's the he's my odds on favorite to be my favorite rookie wide receiver pick for fantasy because of the fact that he will likely go outside the top two or three at the position, which means a higher likelihood of being in Green Bay and Arizona in Dallas. You know, Mike, you just brought up, like, on Tuesday you talked about maybe Michael Gallup isn't going to have the shine he does right, right now in Dynasty Leagues because maybe they grab a rookie wide receiver and then an hour after the show they start talking about Dallas meeting with these wide receivers and, look, they, they're paying Dak a lot of money. They need to give him all the weapons possible. Yes, yes they do. So um, that's we'll leave it there with Olave, Jamison Williams. All right, out of Alabama, was a transfer. Tore his ACL in the national title game, six one and a half, one seventy nine. Really, kind of fits the exact same type of physical skill set of like Garrett Wilson to me, where you are a little bit underweight than maybe you'd like to see, but physically similar. Really fast on the football field, very bursty, monster production, 15 touchdowns, 1,500 yards last year at Alabama, and really wouldn't be projected to be later in the draft if not for that injury. He, yeah. he very well could have been the number one uh, wide receiver taken in this year's draft if he didn't get injured. He just completely dominated. Ironically, he was with these other two Ohio State guys, transferred with those other three, yeah. transferred out because he was a little bit more buried on the depth chart and then proved that... Look, maybe he is the best of that group. I loved his tape. I don't like the size, but he is different to me because if if you look at o Olave and Garrett Wilson, they're they're winning everywhere. They're you know Olave's routes are just unbelievable, and that that's all fine and dandy. But when I look at these smaller players, I really want them to win with speed, and they're all blazingly fast. But Jam Jamison Will Wilson Williams, Jamison <laughs> Williams. <laughs> looks like he uses his speed you watch his highlights and it's non-stop pulling away from guys yeah and there's no player that had better downfield separation than Jamison Williams in, in the collegiate level right he he's like a Deshaun Jackson type to me where undersized but he's so darn fast on the field that he could just have bomb after bomb after bomb so 11 touchdowns of 30 plus yards which was number one in all of the FBS so for fantasy it's going to be really interesting right he is, you know, similar to the NFL draft. He's injured. He 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 tore his ACL late. He's not going to be ready to go. And so when you're in your rookie startup draft, he's going to drop a few spots because people are wanting someone that can play this year. And so are the Chiefs and the Packers and the Cardinals. These are teams in contention. So you may see those high-quality destinations, even Dallas, high-quality destinations. You know, we talk about Gallup isn't going to be back. 
Well, you're drafting a guy in the first round. You might want to be able to play him in week one. Mm -hmm. So some of these high-quality destinations might not be where Jamison Williams lands. He may be a player that develops on a situation that is two or three years out. Yeah, but I, I, I'm a believer. I really just loved his tape. We both have him at number two on our list. Yeah. Yeah, and I have him lower uh, simply because of, uh, like, his tape is very good. It's only one year of it's outrageous production. I mean, to be fair, the you said the 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, but to that point had not surpassed 200 yards. Uh, the transfer, we have, we have – you know, we, we don't have insight into what was going on at Ohio at Ohio State. Sorry, of why wasn't Jamison playing more? Was like was there a a the the politics of the team that he he couldn't rise up the depth chart? Was he just the the team didn't view him as good enough to rise up the depth chart? And so he made the decision, which was for him the right decision. But to I was me, say fifteen hundred and fifteen, I know can't, can't persuade you that that was. Oh, no, that, it was, that he should, you know, he's a good enough player. It's, but uh, why would the transfer matter if you put up fifteen hundred and fifteen at Alabama in the SEC? Yeah, that's I, the I part. Know. That's I, the argument. I and, and I, the, the, your argument is one hundred percent accurate. It's simply a, it's just a gut thing of like when we see players not work in the NFL. It's not usually because they are bad players. It's other things that we have no insight into where they are not connecting. They're not, uh, they don't have the right practice habits. They're not mentally strong enough. Things that you just, we on a fantasy football podcast, we can't possibly say what has happened. So that's what, that's the non staff. Yeah. That is what is holding me back from going all in on Jamison Williams because it should, it should be an easy slam dunk that Jamison Williams is going to go in the NFL and dominate right away. He's, he's going to be a Patriot. That's what I think. He's, <laughs> he's one of these Alabama guys. They, they're they not, you know, in it for right now. They got Parker. That, that'd that be a good landing spot. And the last thing I'll say on him is weight, the 179. You know, it's he's a, low. He's a, he's super low. He's a few pounds uh, lighter than Garrett Wilson. Because of the ACL, he's not, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't able to put on weight and do his normal uh, workout. So you, you kind of give a little bit of grace there when, when you weigh a little bit less coming off of a – uh, an ACL injury. Now, those are the top five. Now, we all have them in different orders, but those are the consensus top five for all three of us. I have Wilson. Uh, I have Wilson. I got a, a Lave three. Jameson Williams, too, sorry. A Lave three. Drake London, four. Traylon Brooks, five. Yeah, and there and there's a break here. I I think this is really the the tear break. So I was setting you up to give your top five, and, and I was opposed, looking, and I was looking for Jason. It. Had, okay, you Jason, were looking for him while you talked. All Jason's right. got London, Williams, Burks, Wilson, Olave, and I am Wilson, Burks, London, Williams, Olave. All to change right after the draft. Yep, of course. Uh, but this next, if you want to draw the line there, there are other players that have, uh, I would say, fan bases. <laughs> Out there on uh, NFL Draft Twitter, people uh, in love with Sky Moore. I like Sky Moore out of a lot. Western Michigan. Uh, he's five ten, one ninety five. He's the new Moon Hands. Yeah, he has uh, the biggest hands in the class. He has hands that make um, uh, who was that? Kenny Pickett very, very jealous. Moon hands on the Giants. Okay, yes. Oh, by yes. the way, Akeem Hicks was the other name I wrote down with uh, Traylon Burks. Yeah, I mean, uh, just giant hands for being five. Moon hands. We need a new moon hand. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. So he, uh, I, I didn't like him as much. I think he's lower in my rankings, but uh, you know, he had a lot of production. Um, yeah, and he's got giant hands. So. I'm gonna bring up some names. You tell me who you want to talk about. Okay. Um, but Jahan Dotson, who I, I, I liked on film. Yes. Too small for me. <laughs> I'm a sizest. Five eleven, one seventy eight. Uh, David Bell out of Purdue. Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. George Pickens getting a lot of talk right now. 6'3", 195 sure. out of Georgia. Those two Also guys. looks very special on Yeah, film. I want to pause, pause at least on Christian Watson because he is... 6'5", 208. He is such a wild card. 6'4", 208, runs a 4'3", 6", putting his speed score just nearly off of the charts. The, the green bar is, is just about to give a smooch to the other side. Uh, because his his athletic ability is is so incredible, but he's from a smaller school. He's Not a lot of production in North Dakota. He so he played a couple years ago with Trey Lance, small school, 
And yet, with those physical skills, <laughs> forty-three catches. He had forty-three reception, receptions for eight hundred yards and seven touchdowns. And I do not mind a in small. College. In the, I do not mind a small school guy. Like uh, I brought up Corey Davis, yeah, you know, because he was a small school guy. He ended up. I mean, he was like fifth overall in the draft, but he was at a small school, and his production was. Like fourteen hundred yards it should, a year. That's what it should be at a small yes, school. Yes, you should. You should be doing Rashad dominate. Penny's running back numbers. Yes. What was it San Diego State for Rashad yes. Penny? Where they're just they don't make sense. They look right. that good. And to put up eight hundred yards. Otherwise, you get Justin Watson out of it, not Christian Watson. It is just it's sketchy, but the size and the speed is something that is very rare the film too i think was excellent like I, I realize he didn't have a lot of production but he looked the part he looked great and my biggest thing is you know he, he's a he's a senior which i don't like i like the early declares but he went to the senior bowl and he was the talk of the town i mean everybody was saying which he, matters he dominated a lot it's, you know that's what happened with debo samuel um when when the niners were there and then they drafted him so people i think people Cooper are cup also dominated i'm the very bowl. very curious where he goes in the draft. He falls to round three, four, whatever. He's a lower production guy from a small school. But if he creeps up to the, the second, or I've seen inklings of the first, then I'm all in on him because I really like the film. And what about maybe the most injured player in the draft? George Pickens, 6'3", 195, but didn't play a lot over the last two years. In fact, 2020, 2021 combined for 41 receptions, just five last year after the ACL. I, I I love the film. I it's love the size. Tough with the lack of time in production, he he's broke, sure of himself. He says he's the best wide receiver in the class. He broke out as a true freshman years ago and was awesome at an age that people aren't that good. And then he's been injured basically since then. So he is certainly on my radar of some. These two guys, Christian Watson and George Pickens, are my next two after the. Uh, that the reminds five. me of somebody, Rondale Moore. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> that is exactly who comes to mind. The difference is Rondale Moore is an itty bitty baby at five seven, and this guy's six three. Yeah, Kyle, I'm curious as you have been knee deep in the dynasty pass. Do you have any specific thoughts on Pickens or on one side or the other? Do you believe in the potential? I'm from Georgia, and so I watched a lot of him, but I'm not a big fan. Okay. Ooh. All right, Take that, George. He's a Georgian George, authority. And his, this is George from Georgia. Wow. Oh, yeah. Man. It's very Georgian. Taken down by the Borgorgan. I meant <laughs> Borgorgan? <laughs> Bajorgian. The Bajorgian. Yeah. Throw a goiter in there. You did. I don't know what happened. <laughs> First either. of all, I shouldn't have thrown to Kyle because apparently he lost his voice between this morning and now. <laughs> and then the Bajorgian is, is that's the new name. All right. Uh turning our attention ever briefly to the tight end position, Trey McBride. <sighs> Trey McBride and Greg Dulcich. Do we yeah. have a favorite, and do we care? <laughs> uh, I, I have a favorite. I actually really like Trey McBride. I do, I, too. I think he's great. When I watched the film, reminded me quite a bit of Mark Andrews. It was unbelievable that he didn't score. He just didn't do that. He loved having yards, and he loved having great catches and yards after the catch. Four, four touchdowns on 22 receptions in 2020. One touchdown on 90 receptions 1,100 in yards and a touchdown. That's I think that that is – It's embarrassing. Really. It's embarrassing, but I, I have to believe that's just, you know, luck of the draw there. You know, you get tackled at the one. I, Jacoby Myers is like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, But I like the tape a lot, um, and I think he'll be the, the first uh, pass-catching tight end drafted. Now, Mike, you like Dulcich, but yes. I, I, I have to ask you. Yeah. Is it those head and shoulders locks yeah, on his head? How much is it the hair? Don't leave out the mustache, fellas. I know. I know. Look. I know. Yeah. yeah th I mean, he's his vibe. I wish we could, we need a, a a vibe metric. Yeah, he's got the Palomalu Soft, vibe going on, just off the charts. Like this guy, is, like he's doing all right in and his five life. touchdowns. He's doing all right. Uh, but if he looked like Sam Darnold, would he be your number one? That's the question. <laughs> okay, uh, he's, Zach yes, Wilson? He's, he still would be. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if you gave him like that physical stature, then no. Right, right, right. I mean, these guys are they're very, very close to each other. But uh, you like Big D. <laughs> <laughs> big Big Greg D, as they <laughs> are calling him in the streets. Uh, yeah, I like he's just he. when I'm watching between the two of them, um, he's the one that at least seems more Kelseyan to 
to me, uh, and again, not a not an official talent scout, uh, but like that's when you're watching a tight end, you're really, really hoping. Please remind me of Travis Kelsey, and and Dulcich reminds me of him just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, some comps we had from McBride, Todd Heap, if you remember him. Oh, Todd Heap was great in Baltimore, and um, Dulcich. I I see faster Austin Hooper. Is a faster Austin Hooper Travis Kelsey is the question. If, uh, if Austin Hooper was really Hoop, fast, would he be Kelsey? No, Hooper's not physical enough to be Kelsey. Also see Dawson Knox a little bit with Dulcich. Yeah, that's fair. But the the headline here, if you haven't heard us say it before, rookie tight ends not drafted uh, at number four overall, they just don't make a big impact. I mean, it's just very, very rare. I mean, look at Pat Fryermuth, who we all think is a very talented oh, man. Uh, tight end, but it's been a while since since we've talked about getting Luth. Mm. That's true. Yeah, I mean, but Muth. tight ends, rookie tight ends, don't get Luth very often. No, but what about going into year two? Is the Muth going to be Luth? Oh, in year two? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> Mike <laughs> on fire. We opened and we closed <laughs> with bangers. Well, they, they, we got to shut this down as fast as we can. That'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Check out ultimatedraftkit.com if you want access to the Dynasty Pass. You'll see breakdowns on all the rookies. Until next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.